Hello, this is Blurs on Nerds, episode two. I am Lana. And I'm Matt. Welcome back. Welcome back. And can I just say thank you to everybody who downloaded the first show? I know I felt so special. Yes. What did we have, like 30? <laughs> I was happy when we had like seven. I know. It was awesome. Because well, I was like, minus, <laughs> minus oh, one is me. <laughs> I was like, well, I guess we have six because I'm one. Um, <laughs> but no, seriously. Well, and, and it was me. Right. So it's five. Bye. <laughs> but seriously, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Twittersphere, for s- spreading the nerd. Um, thank you, Instagram. Thank you, Facebook. Uh, thank you, word of mouth. Uh, we are very much a grassroots operation um and we're trying to really as i say spread the spread spread the nerd so please tell tell your friends uh there'll be plenty more blurred on nerd to come yes yes so let's just kick this off now one of our uh i'm gonna call it a segment because again it makes me feel special right um (laughs) we gotta start somewhere i know so our segment our blast from the past segment last week was pretty popular there was a couple of comments about how much people really really like that right so um we can talk about that again talk about some things from our past so matt let me ask you we're going to talk a little bit about some books that we read when we Mm. were young that had a profound effect on us um what were you reading what changed you what made you kind of pause in the midst of your adolescent life and just say wow I can't believe I just read that. Uh, the, well, there were so many books. Like The Giver. No, everyone read The Giver. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> you had to read The Giver. Uh, I was, right? Like Harry Potter, all that stuff. Um, but honestly, I would say Ender's Game and Ender's mm-hmm. Shadow, uh, okay. which was the sequel. Uh, uh, not sequel, but like a parallel story from the boy that followed Ender um, throughout his story. I love that story because we were like the same age at the time and Mm-hmm. Obviously, as, as you all know, uh, they're doing a, a movie uh, translation of the book Ender's Game, which looks pretty, pretty cool. But it was cool because he had so much power and didn't know it. It was very encouraging for a young person to know that they are greater or to be greater than they believe they are. So mm-hmm. for me, it had a profound effect on my life because it really encouraged me to do and to strive for greater things that not necessarily people would say I couldn't do, but that people wouldn't imagine, you know, that I could do or anybody could do, you know, all you, if you can, if you can think it, you can believe it, you can achieve it. Right. (laughs) Isn't that like a, isn't that like a, the more, you know, NBC. Oh, the more, you know, (laughs) the more, you know, know. okay. sorry, I can't sing. (laughs) Sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, (laughs) So what about you? What about you, Lana? What what was your, what was the book? I'm going to try, I'm going (sighs) to, Because it was so much, it's hard. So I'm just going to go through a couple of titles super quick. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to say my first love was Nancy Drew. I started that off with fourth, fifth grade. I had 60 Nancy Drew books, and I just read them, devoured them. Lord. Um, yeah, you know. And But I'm going to say the one book or the short, short series of books that really profound, uh, profoundly affected me was Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry by Mildred Taylor. Mm -hmm. And also the sequel to that, Let the Circle Be Unbroken. Because growing up in an area where I was the only, meaning the only black person in the class, um, it was really affirming to me to read about, you know, what could be a real life struggle of this black family in the South after the civil war, they were landowners, owners, they were achievers and just, you know, everything that they went through. I, I and I, I read, I read them probably each like five or six times. And then the third was the road to Memphis, which happened after roll of thunder, hear my cry. Mm-hmm. And Cassie Logan had grown up somewhat. So that was, that was definitely life changing for me. We could, we could have, a full podcast dedicated to books because uh, I'm looking at my bookshelf now, which is not that great. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm saying like it's on a grand scale, but not really. Uh, but it's like 22 books. Like, three of those are like cookbooks that I haven't opened yet. But uh, I mean, like I'm trying. I can't even see it from here. Uh, but gosh, I, I read so many books. Artemis Fowl, huge Artemis Fowl fan. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, what else? Of course, Harry Potter. 
I mean, you can't go wrong with Harry Potter. I never read Harry Potter. See, this is. Can you, I didn't. Can you, can you I just. Off, I was off? a little. I was a little bored. You know. Can I don't you turn know. Off the podcast, please. I don't. I, I was just. It. You know. I tried to watch the movie, but I fell asleep. Well, the movies aren't. Well. Yeah. I haven't seen it. I'm seeing half of one. And what is there? Seven movies? Six? Five? Eight. Because then they do. Wow. Well, because they re- they split the last one into two, I believe. Oh, they like to do that too. Yeah, you know they're doing that now. But I mean, you know, it. we all have different. I just. I don't know. I'm sorry. I just. I can't. I apologize. I, can't. I apologize. I can't. I'm so sorry. Well, I I don't know. I just, are Those books I read like four or five times. The first book I read. <laughs> <laughs> and please, one, don't, don't, okay, view, view, listeners, please do not unsubscribe from us because of Lana's failures. I'm sorry. Uh, I believe everyone on this planet read those books, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> but I read the fifth book first out of seven. I read the fifth book. How first. could you possibly go out of order? I mean, I know I haven't read them, but how could you do that? How could can you I have tell a you? series? Can I tell you? I, okay, if you let me explain, Lana. I'm, I'm trying. I, I'm sorry. I, I know just... you're so anxious. You're so anxious for the climax. I know. <laughs> um, because <laughs> blue is my favorite color, and uh, the Order of the Phoenix is all blue. It's a gorgeous blue book. I'm actually looking at it right now. <laughs> um, so in high school, high school, uh, they had said. In my English, in my AP English, they had said, well, we're going to, you know, have this, this semester, we're going to have to read a book every, like, week or so. Mm-hmm. So, we went to the library, and my school had a really good library, and I was looking, and I'm looking, I had never thought twice about Harry Potter. I heard of it, but I was like, whatever. And I saw this blue book. It's all blue. And I looked at it, and I was like, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Hmm. And I just took it. I, I rented it. And okay. read, I read it in four days. It's 700 oh. pages. And wow. I loved it. Now, I didn't know who Voldemort was. I was like, clearly he's a bad guy, but who is he really? Um, right. Like, is he, is he really a bad guy or is he one of those, like, dark heroes? I don't know. Because um, uh-huh. so, I kind of sided with him. I thought Harry Potter was kind of a loser. Um, and, <laughs> and, but it was also a dark book in, in general. So I had to go. Uh-huh. So this is the order. This is the honest order that I read Harry Potter. I read book five which is Order of the Phoenix, book mm-hmm. three, Prisoner of Azkaban, which is my favorite I heard close, of that. close tie of, uh, of Order of the Phoenix. Then I read one and two, Chamber of Secrets and uh, the other one. And uh, then Goblet of Fire in, in that order, seriously. So I read five, three, one, two, four. <laughs> oh my And God. Goblet of Fire is my least favorite because it was so... I hated the Quidditch World Cup. I know none of the, you're probably like, what is this? We'll talk about it off the Well, isn't that thing where they're flying on some brooms and right. you have to throw a ball or something? Yeah, <laughs> a Quidditch. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's like, think of FIFA. Like it's on the scale of uh, the World Cup. Okay, it's, so it's, it's field hockey on a broom. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like lacrosse on a broom. It's lacrosse on a broom. Got it. <laughs> if you <laughs> check, <laughs> check. Okay, so you know all about the books. Okay, so that was um, another profound story that I loved or book series. I, I love them, I, and I've read them. I don't know, like three or four times. I did in the end. I did read them all in order, but you know, you gotta you gotta start somewhere. And I started with my favorite color that drew me to those books. So you're welcome, J.K. You're welcome. <laughs> so, I love it. I love so, it. <laughs> I love the book because of its color on the cover. Right. <laughs> that drew me to Harry Potter, started, so you're welcome, Jacob. It all started with the color blue. No, I'm, hey, It's I my got favorite it. color. It's my favorite color. It's my favorite color, too, so I can understand pretty things. Okay. <laughs> I can understand pretty things. Oh, God. Okay, okay. Off off this subject, we're done. So, <laughs> so, I know one more. I have to. Do you? Oh, fine. Okay. What is no, it? I have to. Okay, okay. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm just, I can't. Just leave this topic without. I have to talk about Robert Cormier. I am the cheese, the chocolate war, beyond the chocolate war. Yes. So, Star Trek The Next Generation. Um, I've got like the first 60 something books. And mm-hmm. then Mzadi, The Heartback by Peter David. He's master. And oh my gosh. 
And then when I was younger, I got into horror a little bit. Had to, I was reading Christopher Pike. Love Christopher Pike. I wasn't too much into R.L. Stein, Fear Street. A lot of my friends were like, R.L. Stein. I was like, Goosebumps, boo, Christopher Goosebumps. Pike. I love Goosebumps. Oh, my gosh. Everybody's like, Goosebumps. I was like, uh-uh. Christopher Pike, teenagers, getting into trouble with scary stuff. I love it. Okay. I had to get that out. I feel better. I told you we could have a, a full podcast dedicated to books. So, listeners, okay. expect. Expect it, because we can't help it. We no. like to I'm writing this down like, oh, shoot, we have to have a full hour dedicated to books. To books, right. Lord. Um, okay, so let's get into something a little bit blurty, a little bit nerdy, or uh, like tech news and rumors. So yeah. we can start off with my favorite, which will probably be a weekly thing because I am a true, true, true fan of uh, Apple. Yeah. All things Apple. So Apple, as you know, is in the news not necessarily for good things because of what tax evasion but we're not gonna talk about that that's not what we're here for we're here for my what i will be getting is the iWatch. so i watch it's still you know it's still a rumor but you know all these analysts i'm, I'm like i guess they you get it's cool to get paid to make up things but yes <laughs> sometimes but, they're right sometimes they're wrong but they're just analysts so it doesn't really matter right and they get paid like six figures so i think i'm gonna go into that next into right. that that career segment next yes um, i can talk to folks and guess right and get paid a lot of money so yeah. the rumors have been swirling this year about apple's new product uh brand new product which is the iWatch. and allegedly what analysts are saying is that it's ahead of schedule and uh it's already in production they're already testing, like, I think a thousand watches, Apple is, with their main manufacturing partner, Foxconn, out of China. Uh, but it's said to feature a 1.5 inch OLED screen, um, if I say that right. O OLED. Display. OLED, which stands for organic light emitting dioid. Or dioid. Not dioid. Dioid. So it's like a flimsy, think of like a flimsy. Uh, it's a screen. It's a screen, but it's very flimsy. With a light. Right, emitting. <laughs> and it's this flimsy. So the cool thing is, which I'm excited about, is it's supposed to be already like the Google, we'll talk about this too, but the Google Glass Killer. I'm going to use that in quotations. Because yes. it's supposed to be fully integrated to your iPhone. You don't have mm -hmm. to pull out your phone. Like All your notifications will come to your, to your watch, being if you have a phone call, text messages, any other notifications and the notification center screen so it's supposed to do everything your phone does ish without you having to without, without having to obstruct any conversations because people look at their watches all the time and it's just part of the lifestyle i think this is interesting um and the way our technology is going also what i found interesting about the iWatch was the biometrics mm -hmm. and you know and for those of you who don't know it just means that the watch can determine who's wearing it. Yes. So supposedly, if you're not connected to the watch, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're not connected to the watch, then supposedly it's not going to work. But it can also monitor your heart rate, um, respiration, things like that, which, and I'm honestly thinking which for maybe some of our older audience or um, even our younger audience, which may have health problems. I mean, I'm looking, looking at this medically this could possibly be a lifesaver if the technology is there and if the technology is integrated into the watch. I think that would be really cool. I think that's extremely cool because, like, right <laughs> now I have, like, on my wrist right now I have a Nike Fuel Band. Uh -huh. I love yes. it, even though it doesn't have true biometrics. But it does, you know, it, it, I set a goal of, like, 3,000 points every day, but it monitors not so accurately, very flexibly. Flex, flexibly. Is that a word? Um Flexible, <laughs> Flexible, um, your steps, your uh, calories burned, and then like your distance traveled. So it's cool. It's more of like a motivational thing. But it would be really cool if to get an eye watch and it not only does your biometrics, but it measures things like your heart. Well, obviously your heart rate with the biometrics, but any type of goals you may have. Because I guess you could integrate. I'm sure because Nike's been a huge partner with Apple with the Nike Fuel Band, as you can, as you, I don't know if you know, Lana, but they kind of refused to put the Nike Fuel Band app on Google Android market. It's been, oh, really? It's been, with app, it's been with Apple for, I think, a year and a half, two years, and they have no plans. As of the last time I read, which is in the past month and a half, they have no plans to release the app to Android users. So I'm assuming with this iWatch, Apple will be quick to say, hey, Nike, 
this could kind of kill your product, but if you, or I guess it doesn't have to kill it because it'll be so in sync, want to be on your right wrist, want to be on your left wrist, so. Yes. Well, and also, from what I read, um, supposed to be actually be able to buy this by late next year. Lord. And, yeah. So, take, you know, throws my start head. saving. It's going to take half your life savings to buy <laughs> I'm already broke. I'm already broke for, for the, we have more tech news to talk about. So let's just call this the money news because clearly the money news. I don't have, the I will not have any money. Out your yeah. Just, I just throw money at places, at companies like Apple and Google like, just and, take it. and Sony. Like just take my money. So I guess that really answers the question, uh, will you buy it? I, I know I, sadly, will buy it. I've had every iPhone since iPhone 2G. I don't have any, I never really? bought any of the S's. But I've had the iPhone 2G, the 3G, the 4, and the f now I have the 5. And I probably, more than likely, will get the 6. Um, I don't want to say I'm an Apple snob, but it's just, I, I do, I'm, I like the product. I'm very comfortable with the product. They need to do something. I'm getting a little bored. I'm looking at, well, we'll talk about that. That's a whole other conversation. Right. But I do want to touch on the Google Glass a little yes. bit because when I looked at it and I kind of looked at the specs and I was like oh my gosh okay and like I was telling you the way the headset looks it reminds me of this episode of Star Trek the Next Generation and even my sister who is not a sci-fi person even she liked this one but you put it you put the little device over here it's just called the game so you put the device over your head and it zaps lasers in your eyes. And then you're playing this game and people are walking around in a daze and they have this headset on and they're playing this game. And people, if you watch The Next Generation, you already know what episode I'm talking about. I don't even have to go any further. But I'm looking at this mm -hmm. and I can't help when new, when new technology comes out like this where you're putting it over your head and it's interfering with your vision. And it's not interfering because it is translucent. But... I just, you know, I have to wait a couple of years because there, you know, what are the side effects? What are, you know, there are so many things that we don't know. And I think the concept is really neat of just having that display right in front of your eyes. And then you have um, like a map quest, not that it's map quest, but a GPS type command. It's all voice operated. Um, show me directions here. So show me directions there. Translate. There's so much that you can do with it, but I'm still a little bit cautious about this type of technology. I completely agree. Plus, I'm cautious because it's $1,500. <laughs> So yeah, because do I really do I really need that hooked up to my face <laughs> at all times? I mean, I constantly complain that sometimes I'm too tied to my phone. It's it's a weakness, and I think it's a weakness of a lot of, <clears throat> especially Americans, that we're very tied to our technology. And I, I joke that when I don't have my phone, I don't I lose like I lose a part of myself. If it's true, have you ever oh, like gosh. went to work? If yes. your phone the entire oh day, you're like, Oh my gosh, I the... feel like I can't even think. I can't even function. It's I was like, sad. <laughs> it is sad and it's sick. It takes me 30. And I feel like I don't know what to do. <laughs> it takes me 25 to 30 minutes to get to work. I got to work one day, realized I didn't have my phone, and I went home. <laughs> I went home to grab my phone. Well, I, okay, okay. It, it, I waited like an hour because I was like, okay, I don't need it. It's fine. But I'm like, I can't do it. check my tech message. I can't, I can't check Twitter. I can't check Facebook. I can't check Instagram. So, so I went home and grabbed my phone. Now, mind you, as soon as I grabbed my phone, you know, I hit the home button. There's no notifications. Right. And, the, and that's the saddest. Can I just tell you what the saddest thing is that's happened to me before? Yes. See, because I just work too far, and since I teach, I can't leave and come back and get the, my phone. Yeah, the inconvenience of the kids. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm missing this, and I get home, and there aren't any messages. I've been thinking about you all day, and you haven't been thinking about me? <laughs> Siri, how dare you? And I was just like, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> like you, you're, like, you're so happy to have it in your hand, and all, all you see is just the charge screen. You're like, oh. Yeah. That's it? <laughs> okay. Like, that's all this is what I was... I guess okay. I'm not as popular as my head thought I was. Um, right. But yeah, so that's, that's one thing that concerns me is definitely the price uh, and the very much even more detached from society. I read an article about the, uh, this person I don't think, ha oh, the person did have the Google Glasses, but he talked about how you got, the farther you got out of Silicon Valley, the more awkward it was because people would see you and 
want to talk to you about it. They want to see if they can touch it. Can they wear it? And you're like, one, this is $1,500. Two, no. But I feel like I'm carrying $1,500 on my face. Like, I'm sure people have glasses that are probably, you know, that expensive, but or frames that are that expensive. But people don't know it. I mean, when people see Google Glass, everyone knows how much it is, and everyone wants to use it. Everyone wants to be a part of it. So I would just feel kind of unsafe today, like to have yeah. one on, because I feel like anyone can just take it. Uh, can you imagine somebody driving with this thing on their head? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, I mean, do you, t- you, you can't do you text? Say- like in California, it's pretty hardcore with the texting. It's like three hundred fifty dollar fine if you're if you're talking on the phone. Really. Um, yeah, because, you know, people don't use their hands-free devices and I still see people, they're, you know, wavering back and forth and traffic out here is a hot mess anyway. Like if you live here, then you know what I'm talking about. 405, Mm -hmm. I'm looking at you (laughs) and you know, you need to have both people out here don't play with driving. It's not a game. And to have something else to be bothered with besides the radio, besides, you know, your phone as you're trying to unobtrusively make a playlist selection, which is so dangerous. I mean, I just don't feel like we need anything else. Well, I, you know, me being in Indiana, Indianapolis, whoop, whoop, nap town, raise the roof. Um, (laughs) (laughs) The traffic here is people drive, as I like to call it, without a purpose. Um, it's like, do you, like do you <laughs> driving drive? without a purpose, right? Like, and when I'm in Chicago or when I'm in California or really anywhere other than any major city other than Indianapolis, people drive like they have somewhere to be. Even if it's no one wants to go to work, but at least you're driving. They drive. But we're like, driving. We, we do drive with a purpose. Like right. I'm going somewhere and you're in my way. That's you're the purpose. <laughs> like yesterday, I'm driving. This is very off topic, but yesterday I'm driving. We like to segue. And, yeah, I love, we love it. Um, and I'm in the, obviously everyone calls the fast lane, the far left lane. Everyone, yes. if you do not know this, you should know this. And if you don't, I'm talking Sorry, to you. so uh, sorry. Do not be in the left lane of the highway, fast lane, driving the speed limit. Please stop. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just. A, it's, a, it's a fast lane slash passing lane. So you need to be fast and or passing. Okay, I'm done. I'm off my soapbox. But <laughs> move over. Don't be stubborn. Move. Okay, okay. This is for the this is this Yeah, is for we the just sometimes we just, you know, it's good. This is therapeutic. We've talked about this last week. It was therapeutic. Sometimes you got to let things off. You got to let it go. You have this. to release. I need this so bad. This is my release. So, on topic, Yahoo buys Tumblr for 1.1 billion. Do is you really? use Tumblr? Do you that's a lot of money. Uh, is it? But my, my question is, does Yahoo have that money? <laughs> I guess they do. Like, who did they borrow from to buy Tumblr? They did something. And what so are you? What are you gonna do? Okay, so one, what is, what is Tumblr, and what is Yahoo gonna do with Tumblr? Tumble is for the words to tumble out of your mouth or the words to tumble off your keyboard onto a page. That's what I came up with. That is not the official party line, but in my mind, it's for you to tumble. Make sure you send that to the Tumblr company so you can get your money. Uh, you know, because I know I'm, I do. I, I, will, I will need credit for that. We don't have a contract as of yet. Right. But, you know. We're broke. Yeah. <laughs> We do this for the love, not for, for the, the money. Love. <laughs> okay. Clearly, we're not singers, so I'm no, sorry. No, I apologize. I'm sorry. For us. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. <clears throat> so Yahoo buys Tumblr for 1.1 billion, and the CEO promises, and I quote, "Not to screw it up." Well, didn't, just don't change anything. <laughs> just yeah, like don't. I mean, leave it alone. Like, uh, come on. I don't understand because that's where I get all my gifts, all my animated pictures. I, I'm in love with gifts, as you know. Oh I send you gosh. gifts. Yes, weekly. yes. <laughs> that's, ah! like my, that's, that's like my new thing. It's like gifts. I love them. I think it's the. I need to learn how to make one. Yeah. I guess. But I have. I literally have a folder in my in my photo album on my phone. Dedic. It's called gifts. It's like 50 yes. different gifts. It's of everything. Um, but uh, so, okay. Tumble things onto a page. Isn't that Facebook mixed with well, Instagram mixed with Twitter. <laughs> it's you know what it is, and what's cool about Tumblr is like it's your own mini blog. It's not gonna be 
something as formal as maybe Blogspot would be. Okay. But it's just you. It's personal. You could definitely pick and choose, you know, who looks. And I think you can get a little bit more in depth about your thoughts. And you can pick by subject, whereas Facebook, you're attacked with random nonsense. I love you, Facebook. Um, but I mean, come on, let's keep it real. I mean, some of it, you know, That's it, is what it is. I mean, it's cool. It's funny. I like it. I check it every day hour but oh, okay i mean so i'm not mad at it i'll, I'll yeah I'll, i mean I've heard, I've heard of tumblr part, obviously I think it's a little more personal okay. it's you know it's your real thoughts on stuff and you can follow you know some people that you admire you can follow them on there um and it's cool and we actually have a tumblr i don't have anything posted on it i haven't typed up anything for us um neither has matt yet because well i just started it Surprise. This I just found, i'm finding out when you guys are finding out so right so we have a tumblr um and it's blurs on nerds one word dot tumblr dot com and tumblr is t-u-m-b-l-r so be on the lookout it. something will be posted this weekend probably about star trek we'll get to that in a minute uh. yeah i got to got it got it i just can't um so yeah tumblr it's cool you know and and it it's neat i mean whereas twitter is very nice because you can shoot out your thoughts tumblr if you have something that's rolling around in your brain you know and you have maybe 15 minutes you can just get it out there really really quickly you know read right. some comments people can and also people can read blog onto their blogs what you've written like if they admire it if they like it they can share it and that's really neat too it's just okay. a sharing of ideas it's just a burst of burst of thoughts burst of likes burst of ideas yes i think that's where technology is going in general everything is like a burst status updates twitter Ooh. a burst of you know your status uh instagram is a burst of your face Selfie yes. Sundays. <laughs> it's a burst. It's a burst of your face. I just had a picture of a head exploding. Maybe I've watched too many alien movies. I, I watched so much Family Guy because that's what I thought of Peter Griffin getting so excited at that basketball game and his head exploded. It was <laughs> it, no, it exploded like confetti. It was hilarious. Um, confetti explosions are the best, aren't they? Okay, so I'm really excited because I'm as, as listeners. Lana and I are huge gamers. So, okay, here we go. Oh my yes. gosh. So all as right. you as you all know, <laughs> Xbox, which I'm a little PO'd, Xbox One. Really. Yeah. Uh, I was definitely looking forward to Xbox 720. I didn't know you were gonna st- take 359 steps back, but that's just me. <laughs> um, but I Xbox One <laughs> is the new uh, the new next gen video game system from Microsoft. Oh, more than a video game system. We're talking about a whole entertainment oh, yeah. system. It's, it's, every, it's everything. They kept pushing the you know, everything. It's all you need. It's all you need. It's all you need. Is it really all I need? Because I think I need more. I need more. But I'm a huge, you know, obviously, also PS4 was announced a few weeks ago or a month ago. And then a week before Xbox One's press release or announcement or last week, I got an email from Sony from PlayStation inviting me to E3, which, one, why are you inviting me? I can't go. I'm right. I'm a normal person. I'm a little, pe- I'm a little peeled about that. Uh, but to fully go in depth, because there's a lot of things that are still up in the air for the PS4. Exactly, mm-hmm. you know, things like storage, uh, external storage. Is it mandatory game installs? Is it yes. uh, always online? Which I'm a little, you know, ticked off. I've never been a true Microsoft fan. I've never owned a 360. I've always been a PlayStation fan. But this whole always on concept where you always have to be connected to the internet uh, that's you, what i don't like yeah you have that's to pay, what i don't like you have to pay uh to play use games yeah i don't i don't i don't really like that because i mean if we're just talking about gaming there should never ever be you know what everybody's different you know some people say i don't need the internet i just want to play i don't know how but i don't need the internet i don't want to pay for internet i just want to play my game and i don't like the idea of microsoft forcing people saying you have to be internet connected at all times whereas with the ps4 you don't right and they came out and said that you don't have to be ps4 did you don't have to be connected because I'm thinking to myself you know what if I just I just want to play a game like I just want to play I don't always play online and I just want to play a game and I, I have to if I put in a used game it has to scan it to make sure that it's not used and if it is I have to pay money like I have to pay money on the spot 
for yeah. because I would I would say my my game li- my video game library consists of like um, maybe sixty percent to seven sixty to seventy percent new games mm-hmm. and then thirty to forty percent used games. I mean I right. do I do su- I try to support because I know it's very hard for video game makers or manufacturers uh, to stay live and well. I mean, studios are closing left and right. So that's understandable. Like I know Sony just laid off, Square Enix just laid off a bunch of people in California. So after Tomb Raider, even though Tomb Raider did very well, Mm -hmm. it didn't do well enough financially. It it did very well, it did very well units sold, but Uh it didn't do very well enough for them to, I think, break even or make a profit. The game mm-hmm. was so expensive to make. So as you, as obviously as games, as systems get more and more next gen, they get more and more expensive to make. So I don't know, I, 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 can under, I understand where Microsoft is coming from, but at the same time, it's like, as a consumer, that you're asking for a lot from the consumer. I think you are. You're asking for a long term financial commitment. And there, I mean, honestly, when you buy a game, you should be able to have your game and you should be able to buy games without having to come out of pocket to do anything. And I mean, I'm sure there's going to be more clarification on having to be, you know, connected to the Internet. And if that's if that's what we're thinking it is, which is you have to be connected to even use it. Right. Um, I'm sure they're going to go into detail about that because I don't think that's going to go over really, really well. And also add the, you know, so you know the Connect, which is a big deal, like the PlayStation I or Move, PlayStation Move. Um, what I heard is that if you, let's say, I bring my Xbox One over to a friend's, I have to have the Connect with me, right, for it to come on. So even if I'm not using Connect at all. And it's not mm-hmm. the game I want to play has nothing to do with connect. It has to be connected with the system for it to turn on. So there's like a lot of things, like a lot of things you have to bring. It's, it just seems like a uh, very cumbersome. Yeah. And this really makes me unattracted to the system. Well, Harrison, Phil Harrison, who's the uh, Microsoft vice president, you know, and talking about um, the internet connection, um, said basically that it will be about 24 hours before the Xbox stopped you from playing a single player game offline. So, you know, you can play for 24 hours, but you know, it's also saying, you know, it's just, it's a lot of back and forth, you know, because in one report on IGN, it's saying Xbox one doesn't require an always on internet. So, but they're still kind of, I think they're, what I think is that they're kind of looking at what the response is going to be. Right. And determining what their end game is going to be according to whatever the response is. So, I don't, I, I'm interested. So, really, a lot of questions are in the air, especially for PS4. There's, you know, obviously we don't know what the system looks like. Um, and, I, and no one. There's a lot of holes. We don't even know what the storage is yet. Right. That's, I'm like, you know, Xbox, I think where Xbox succeeded, where. PlayStation, and I'm going to say purposely failed, is that they were more open about mm-hmm. And I think they had to be because, you know, sadly, as you may have noticed, we're not talking about the Wii U. I'm not going to talk about the Wii U. I um, just, <laughs> I just, I have my Wii and that's enough. I mean, I, you know, I like Mario. I gave my Wii I... away for free. Oh. <laughs> it literally set in my dorm or my apartment in college for a full year and I never touched it. Yeah, I mean, I just, you know, Donkey Kong Country is a good time. Mario Party's cool. Yeah, and I just, I mean, it's cool. Honestly, if I had like little kids, married family, whatever, um, and I wanted a video game system to play with my kids, mm-hmm. I would definitely, you know, use the Nintendo. To me, it's, it's really cool for kids because the games are safe. Right. You know, you don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, you know, my child just got into my battlefield. You know, you don't. (laughs) Right, exactly. You know, because my students come to school talking about, oh, you know, I played this and I played that. And I'm just like, why are you playing that? (laughs) But, um, you know, I think for, it's, it's definitely more family oriented. And I think there does need to be a game system that's like that. You know, something that's safe where your kids aren't bombarded with images that, you know, 
most normal functioning adults can take a little bit more. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I don't, than small children. I, so I don't it's just you know for, But for, for me Yeah. I'm gonna need some with a little more punch. I'm mean, yeah, like we obviously we you is family oriented, Xbox and I mean, casual, they're yeah. for casual gamers, and then yeah. Xbox One or Xbox 360 and PS3, PS4 are for more of the hardcore gamers. More, I would say, the more adult gamers. It's not really family oriented. Yeah, they try to yeah. do that with Connect, uh, Connect, and PlayStation Move, but still, that's like a small. I think that's a. I believe that's a small demographic compared to mm-hmm. the hardcore gamers that are really has their hands on the product. So we'll see. I'm really excited for E3. I haven't been excited for E3 in a while. Um, the, it was like a 15 second trailer that PS4, PlayStation released with this invitation via email. And it, mm-hmm. it, was a, it was kind of a cool little teaser trailer because you could see the product, you could see the system, but it was all blurred out. So clearly it's black, just like uh, the, v- I call the Xbox One the VCR. Just like the VCR, because it looks like a VCR, doesn't it? It does. I had one. It looks like a VCR. It looks how big. Right. Um, And I have um, have a 360 now with Kinect, and I have to say, I love my Kinect. I absolutely love, love, love Kinect. It's hands-free. It's so much fun. But that being said... You know, my Connect is only, or my Xbox, it's the slim design. It's only a couple of years old at this point. I really don't feel like I need to go out and buy Xbox One. But I do see myself, you know, going out to get the PS4. Oh, yeah. I'm already for saying that. I'm already saying You know, that. and also the free online gameplay, if they decide to keep that as a feature. And I think play- Sony was... Good. You have to wait. You know, they're looking at Xbox One specs and they have to either match or exceed. So they can't release all their stuff, you know, at the same time and then say, oh, well, Microsoft has more of this and more of this and more of that. I completely agree. I I know it took Sony forever to finally start what they call PlayStation Plus service. Yes. Um, you know, like Xbox Live. I think because you, I don't, I'm not sure. Do you have to pay for Xbox Live? You have to pay. Well, I mean, you're online and you can get downloads. Everything like that is free. But as far as gameplay with your friends and stuff, that's a pay service. Yeah. See, and they station. have different levels of pay. Like, yeah. um, you know, with basic, I can stream HBO, um, Netflix, but my, my Blu ray does that. So I really don't need, <laughs> I really don't need to do that. Right. So. Yeah. Because I know, um, like, for instance, Call of Duty on the PS3. You know, you don't pay for, you don't pay for it. And Sony, in, in, in partnership with Infinity Ward and with Activision, have been pretty good about, you know, free for the basic memory. You know, like for me just to get on and play people, you know, you can do like the Call of Duty Elite membership, which gets you more maps and all that. And it's a service that you pay for, but it's not a need to service to pay for. I think, I think Sony has gotten a lot of praise or mm-hmm. call, I say Sony, but really Call of Duty creators, Infinity Ward, Activision versus Blizzard, who makes, uh, um, what, I can't think of it right now. Uh, what's it called? Not LOL. What's, what's that? Uh, what do they make? Uh, oh, so they make Starcraft. Okay. And um, they have always been, you know, you got to pay for this service. And I remember the president of Blizzard saying, this was a couple years ago, he said if he had, if he was over Call of Duty, he would make everyone pay to play online. You have oh, to pay wow. something. So he's, he's been on the record to say, you know, I will, oh, and they make, wow, World of Warcraft. And mm-hmm. you know, he said, you know, he would make people pay for all the services. So I think Sony's still going to stick with the basic, all you need is an ID and a sign in and you can play online for free. Or like me, I'm a PlayStation Plus member, which is like 60 bucks a year. But it mm-hmm. gets you, I think it pays for itself. Uh, in a multi in, in in so many ways because you get so many free games and you get automatic. See, that's yeah. You get cloud they, service. It automatically uh, downloads patches. Like I'll wake up in the morning, turn my PS4. I wish PS4. I'll turn my PS3 on, and it'll say after you turn it on, it'll say you know download it the Netflix patch. Like right now, I'm playing Injustice, and um, it says you know downloaded the Netflix or the Injustice patch, downloaded Batgirl, all these different things. So. It's it's pretty cool. I, I like where it's going, but it's not mandatory. But it's really convenient. Once you pay, once you start paying, it's just like once a year. This is this is great. So okay, let's move on from that because I can talk about tech all day. 
But let's move on to movies. Um, so I just saw, as you did too, Lana, Star Trek Into the Darkness. And I loved it. I, I did not come from a strong Star Trek background. I mean, I watched okay. it as a kid, but I, I didn't watch it like faithfully. It wasn't like my Battle, it wasn't like my Battlestar Galactica. But I mm -hmm. did watch it, um, that and The Next Generation. And coming from like, I'm, I consider myself a third party. I thought the movie was really, really good. Uh, I would say short of excellent. I thought it was really good. I thought it was very fluid. Um, I was really surprised because I've caught myself lately watching movies, even really high budget movies, and thinking like, well, what time is it? Like, is it? You know, right, right, and, right. And I still, that doesn't mean I'm bored, but I'm just kind of like, okay, how long has this movie been going on? And when I saw Star Trek, I genuinely was at the end like, oh, I could, I could watch some more. Like, if y'all want to keep going. Like, yeah. Okay. Watch no, movie. it was it was it was excellent. I really really liked it. A lot of suspense, a lot of action, um, twists and turns. Oh, by the way, spoilers. We're assuming that you have watched it it's been already. A week. It's been a week. Come on. So just <laughs> FYI, fast forward a couple of minutes if you haven't, because we will be going into detail. Right. Because I mean, because this is a remake basically of the Wrath of Khan. Yeah, and the thing is, um, it's. It's it's definitely different. I mean, they brought in Khan, but played by my favorite actor Benedict Cumberbatch, Team Sherlock. Did BBC. he not rip it? I mean, oh my <laughs> gosh, he yeah. I absolutely. love Benedict Cumberbatch. I have loved him since like Cabin Pressure, which is a BBC radio show, uh, mm -hmm. and obviously Sherlock. He was he is excellent, and and he's in the Lord of the Rings or the Hobbit, um, and yes. he is. Excellent. I know that some, there were some complaints because, I, I guess, not I guess, but the original Khan was played by an Indian man. Um, Ricardo Montalban. Yes, and now this is played by a British man, a British white guy. So, I don't want, mostly everything is played by somebody who's British. Yeah, right, because um, they, they are like nope. the best actors, I can't lie. They're, I'm they're just, the best you know what, I am Team USA. I think we need to be given a chance. That's well, true. Obviously, we have been given a chance. But I don't know, I mean, there are, there's, there's a section of people, you know, and I've read just on various message boards, you said, you know, who had a problem even with Superman, you know. Right being played by um, Henry Cavill and, you know, because he's British or whatever, but I'm just like... They're like the new... What, what's his name that plays the lead in The Walking Dead? He's British. I know. <laughs> and sometimes you don't even know until you see him in an interview and you're like, oh... Where did that accent come from? Like, are you, are you serious? Yeah, but... but um, Cumberbatch, I, he played... I thought he played... From, I, I still want to consider this my view a third party view since I really didn't watch Star Trek all that much. Um, mm -hmm. Especially any of the movies as a kid, but... I thought he did an excellent con. I thought the story, like you said, was very action-packed. Um, I know there were some twists at the end with Spock and Kirk's reversal. Yeah. Um, and all I have to say is, why is there a uh, radioactive section that a human being can go into without... You have, it's, it's, it's what, how many hundreds of years in the future? And you tell me you cannot have oh, a hazmat suit next to that door? How come they didn't have, like, why didn't he have a hazmat suit? Why didn't they have some type of computer or something to fix it? Because it wouldn't have made for a good movie. Right, but still. Okay. It's, it's, come on. I know, it's, I know. It's not a, you don't have a hazmat suit? Like, where's, why, I don't see any fire extinguishers. Do you not have, nothing. like, a safety chief? That no walks around. No active shower. Nothing. <laughs> no nothing. No nothing. nothing. <laughs> he went out there all skin, skin in uniform, and said, "I'm just gonna kick this thing, and I'm gonna save it." Can I can I just say when he was kicking that uh, machine, it didn't move one time. It didn't until move. Until like, the very like, last it kick, before. it finally. I was, moved. Like, <laughs> I was like, it's not even nudging. Like he's kicking it. It's not even nudging. So yeah, yeah, this is gonna work at all. But so, I, I must say that uh, the fight scenes uh, when they were on Kronos uh, yes. and oh, yeah. Cumberbatch or Khan, he destroyed he? all those people. He destroyed all those people. And I just couldn't believe the, the, a... the, the devastation. And they sat there and like watched him and were like, oh, my God. <laughs> Can I just say that I got ridiculously excited as bouncing up and down my seat when I realized that we were going to see some Klingons. I was just like, oh my God, Klingons! Yeah, so that's one question I, I do like, have. So um, 
happy. Because I was like, oh my gosh, my God. I was curious because I was wondering, since I'm not, I know you really like Star Trek. So I know it was the next generation where there was a Klingon on the crew. Yes, that would be Lieutenant Commander Worf. Okay, so I was wondering, because I was curious as to whether there was going to be a Klingon that was going to join in this movie. I'm sure there'll be a third one. No, Um, because at this point in the Star Trek universe, they are in no way, shape, or form. um, They're enemies. Allies, they're enemies. And even in the next generation, I wouldn't, they were loose allies. I mean, if there was a war between the Federation and the Romulans, then the Cleons are going to side with the Federation because Romulans are dangerous to everybody. Right. So, I mean, it's, you know, but we haven't we haven't reached that part in that part in Star Trek history yet, where you know they're at the place they're not even talking. And okay, here I go. Oh yeah. So how do you feel about like? Because I know since you're a huge, huge, huge Star Trek fan, I want to know how you felt about the character portrayals. Um, Uhura. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna let it. I'm gonna let it fly. Um, I was disappointed. Mm-hmm. I was disappointed at her diminished role. In this movie, um, I, I mean, she got to speak Klingon, which is cool. She was pretty I, sexy when she did that. I'm not gonna lie. She was, yeah. She was she pretty, did like, her I'm thing, smiling. and I was like, yeah, she's gonna use her linguistic skills. She's you like, know, she said she loosely so, knew the language. No, you didn't. She was right. Cool. <laughs> she her accent she changed everything. Stop <laughs> it. Stop it, Zoe. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to yourself. Anyway. Right. <laughs> It was, you know, it was so cool. I really like that. I like the fact that she was given the opportunity to do something. I didn't like how she was relegated to angry, angry black woman in a relationship. And I did, I'm I sorry. That. I can see that. No, I can see that. I just, I mean, the stereotype right there was heartbreaking to me, especially since I, and I know there was a lot of female hateration towards um, her as character. In the past, in the, in in the, the past. first, right. well, in the very in the first Star Trek movie, the first reboot, I should say, there was a lot of hateration towards her character mm-hmm. because you know she's with Spock, and they were like, "No, nah, I'm not even going to get into that whole ship war." Right. But you know, a lot of them, um, I think, falsely said that you know it diminishes her character. She's the only you know active female in the crew, as if her being in a relationship diminishes who she is as a person. Right. And diminishes what she's capable of. You can be in a relationship and still get your stuff done. I mean, it's not. It's not. You know, it doesn't diminish her. If it doesn't diminish Spock, it doesn't diminish her. And I just want to say, I I am with Kirk. Like, how does that relationship work? Oh, I know, right? I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> that was a really great line. I'm thinking, how does it? He, he's met, like, how he's do you like, argue? And he was like, how does it? Like, how do you argue? Like, I don't understand. And that scene in the ship when they were going to Kronos was very, I really liked it. It was very I did like that one. I liked it because he was kind of explaining to her, you know, his thought process and stuff. I thought it was dumb for her to bring it up on the mission. But, you know, just little things like that mm-hmm. kind of. Like putting her emotions is it, is, are getting in the way her of, her, out uh, of her job. Yeah. And, you know, I just think she's more professional that, yes, she's passionate about what she's doing. And just the lack of kind of anything coming from Spock. Yes, we know he's Vulcan. We understand that. He's half human. We know he has control issues over his emotions. But, oh, my gosh, um, her straight got yoked up by the Klingon. Like, yes, with the giant blade. Snatched. Real and quick. there was nothing. If it wasn't for Khan, her head would have been rolling on the ground. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I laugh. I laugh. And there wasn't so much as a twitch. You know, from it was like, oh, oh dang. dang. Duck? Like, I don't oh, understand. She's dead. she's dead. This is awkward. And, and then coming they to the come ship. back and she gives Spock a kiss and he looks confused now in the first movie it's fine to be confused he gave her more emotion in the first movie than in this one now he just walks around confused he does have that look on his face and i'm like (laughs) why are you confused you've already been together it's not like this is a new relationship for you i just think and i understand they had to build the friendship between spock and kirk because in the first one they were adversaries and now they have to have that bond that friendship thing but do you have to have the friendship thing at the 
defense of your romantic relationship with your girl. Right. I completely agree. You have to. You can have friends and relationships at the same time. And then he gets, you know, Spock gets transferred to another, another ship. I would have loved to see a 30 second conversation between them. I, this clearly I'm not this asking is, for much. This is Lana's segment because I'm, I'm just I'm just sitting here like nodding my head like okay, I feel the passion and I'm okay with that I'm, because I'm I, sorry because you know black women in sci-fi we're few and far between and right. I feel like we've come so far and then I just feel like dang she was relegated to a side chick and then you have Carol Marcus who yes is in Star Trek mythology mm-hmm. who came across as a little Mary Sue ish. And I was <laughs> like, really? Well, well, this kind of plays, this kind of segues into our, I guess, new and ongoing, we're going to go back to this, obviously, but in our new ongoing topic, uh, call, <laughs> you need to sit down. I, I, I can feel I your passion. No, but uh, called, which, Blurred of the Week. So every week <laughs> we'll tackle a blurred um, that has really a been influential in the nerd universe or geek universe and really it's her character lieutenant i can never say it right uh-huh. 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 i want to say uhura or something uh-huh. 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 <laughs> but i was going to ask you you know between zoe saldana and obviously the role uh, played by nichelle nichols originally um do, is there like any do you see comparisons in the characters or do you see um, there's not well you relation? know what because of where we are as a society, Zoe is definitely allowed to do more. Uh, Nichelle was awesome because her role was definitely groundbreaking. Right. I mean, but there was still, you know, her and, you know, the interracial kiss. And, you know, that was pretty cool. And it's funny because I read much later that Spock you know, Leonard Nimoy's character in the original Star Trek series was mm. actually supposed to be the one. Yeah, it But was. there was kind of a big to-do about it oh, because it was, William it was. Shatler was like, I'm the captain, I should be the one to do it. You know, so it kind of became a power thing and he ended up getting to do it. I don't know. I read that. Um, and there I don't was, know if that's rumor or fact. No, but, that is true because um, yeah. obviously, you know, it was a big deal because it was the first on-screen kiss of an mm-hmm. interracial or, uh, uh, or a man and a woman of two different races. Which yeah. is a really big deal because NBC insisted, insisted that their mm-hmm. lips never touch. It was one of those scenes where they kissed like off the ca- like on camera, but they turned their head so it looks like oh, they're making out, okay. but not really. And then they wanted to change it to where uh, Uhura, uh, Lieutenant Uhura, tele- uh, telekinetically forced him to. So it wasn't like <laughs> something that was, you and know, they the tried to, right, right. They try to like change it to where she, forced him to do it, that it wasn't mutual. Uh, but well, she, she couldn't possibly want that black woman. Right, right. And, you know, she wrote, a, she, Michelle Nichols, wrote uh, an autobiography, Beyond Uhura, um, mm-hmm. about, and she insisted that it was, the kiss was real, and even if they tried to obscure their lips, it was always a real kiss. But then NBC was so nervous about it that they said they wanted uh, Jean to do two scenes, one where they kissed and one where they did not kiss. Obviously, more than likely, when he did film them, that they would pick the one where they didn't kiss. Like, they didn't even attempt to kiss at all. So they purposely, Nichelle Nichols and William Shatner, purposely flubbed every non-kissing scene in (laughs) agreement with Gene. So NBC (laughs) had to film, or sorry, not film, had to air the episode, or had to air the scene where they kissed. So it was a really big deal, obviously, because back then it wasn't, you know, that never happened on TV. There was even issues where um, people would, like, touch hands interracially. That was a big deal, you know, on, mm-hmm. a, on a TV show. So NBC was very much sensitive to interracial kissing or inter- physical interaction at all. I mean, even just hand touching was an issue back then. So she, it was, the role was very, I'm sure as you agree, the role was very groundbreaking. Uh, it oh, was a really was. big deal. And I went back and watched that episode after mm-hmm. I watched uh, the Into the Darkness. Yes. And I was like, wow, that was kind of passionate. Yeah. I'm not, I'm I, 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 like, I like Star Trek of old. I, I kind of, and now I'm really tempted 
And, uh, tell me if I it's should. It's only or not. a couple of seasons. Just watch it. I was about to say. I was. You, see, you knew what yeah. I was about to say. I'm like, should I watch it? Because I'm, I'm kind of tempted. Because wasn't the Next Generation longer on longer than the Next Generation was ten seasons. Jeez. Yeah, I don't know if but I it that. was good until I mean it was good up until they had Worf and Counselor Troy get together. I was like, what the? <laughs> See, yeah. So, but you know they they broke them up and her and Rocker finally got married. I love that. I love that you just go off on these tangents. And I'm like, I'm <laughs> no, I just I'm, I'm sorry. Like, okay. That was just the most ridiculous thing I'd ever seen. The passion you're giving me, I just I want to share that. It's just Star Trek. I, t- I had like sixty something Star Trek books. Like I was heavily invested in this show so i will i promise listeners i promise i'm gonna go back um and watch the at least the original series i watched yeah, the, original, the original one it's cool you know there was a lot of really good episodes in there there were some episodes that were just silly but there were some really there were some good episodes i can't believe it was only on for a few seasons that's what i heard it was only it wasn't on that long yeah i think it was two i believe really I think two or three. I think it was two, though. I mean, because I remember watching as a kid, like, I would watch the syndicated uh, yeah. episodes. And, um, but, I, I mean, nothing, there was no fluidity because I would watch it, like, once a week or, you know, when it was on. But I would like to go back and watch it because I keep thinking, like, I'm in love. I'm a huge, huge, huge BSG, Battlestar Galactica fan. So yes. I feel like if I love Battlestar, I'm like, I should love Star Trek. Original the or the new series? Uh, I did watch, I, of course, I watched all four and a half seasons, I guess is what it's called, of the uh-huh. new, of the reboot. And then I went back because they had the original series on Netflix. And yes. I went back and I watched, not all of them, but I watched a couple of them and I watched some, some Caprica. Mm-hmm. And not all of Caprica. I think it was only one season, but it was on. It's in Netflix, and I watched it. And I enjoyed it, you know, because I, I I'm not too affected by time, like um, like graphics or CGI. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not too sensitive. If the story to that. is good, it's good. If the story's good, it's good. You know, and Battlestar Galactica, the original, was had a really good story. I haven't watched it all, but the, what I have watched, I enjoyed it. So graphics don't really drive me to to watch or not watch a show. Quick question with um, Battlestar with the new season. Mm-hmm. Were you uh, were you satisfied with the way it ended? I haven't watched it. I want to watch it, but I get easily angry if they don't wrap it up in a way that I think angry. is appropriate. Like you mean, like so, you mean like Inuyasha? How they just stopped? Right. Stopped. As we touched on. <laughs> as we touched the on. First as we podcast. bitterly yeah. touched on last week. Um, I personally, what I've caught myself doing lately is when I watch a show to completion, which is hard to do because most shows don't get they don't go to completion nowadays. Mm-hmm. Um, but. I tend to go to like a forum or like a blog and read what a bunch of people have to say about it and kind of get their feedback on it. I, from a BSG uh, point, I loved it. I loved the ending. It was closure for me. Okay. I, the only thing I didn't like was that the show ended. I really, I was so emotionally in, uh, involved and invested in that show that when it ended, I was genuinely like heartbroken. I was genuinely heartbroken. And I know they have this, what is it, uh, Battlestar Galactica Blood and Chrome, which is on Machinima. And now I actually have the Blu-ray DVD uh, series. Oh. I haven't watched it yet, but it just came out, I think, like within the past seven months. And it's not, it doesn't have the same characters, but it's in the universe. It's in Battlestar universe. But I genuinely love the show. I just, I just feel bad because sci-fi has such good shows that get canceled. Eureka, I was a, I'm a huge oh. Eureka fan. And Very cool. It's cool. They canceled it because it was too expensive. They said it was. They they said on record. Sci-Fi said on record that it was too expensive, and that's why they canceled the show. Well, Terra Nova, which I loved, which had the viewership, mm-hmm. um, and that was about dinosaurs and time was, travel. Yeah, and how was, can you go wrong? Terra Nova was awesome, and they canceled that because of money. They had the viewership, but it was too expensive to make. And I was like, really? Right. Really, Fox? Well, don't. Fox. Okay. Anyways. Sorry. Yeah, because wasn't one episode like really expensive? Like it was like a dinosaur. Ep- well, obviously they're all dinosaur, but it was some episode that was extremely expensive. I remember hearing about um, about it. I remember hearing about how expensive it was. It was just so good. I mean, dinosaurs, dinosaurs every week. I I'm trying to think of the show that I watched faithfully that was canceled, and I was so mad. Um, what was it called? It was, oh, Sanctuary. I was a huge, oh, huge, Sanctuary. huge, huge Sanctuary fan. And I followed, like, Amanda Tappen on Twitter, and I followed mm-hmm. her everywhere. And she, you know, being the show's creator, she, um, she came from Stargate. And mm-hmm. she said, I remember her saying at the end of season four, she was like, well, sci-fi hasn't confirmed whether we're renewed or not. And, like, seven months goes by, 
And everyone's like tweeting her, like, what's going on? Is the show canceled? And she's like, I don't know. She's like, I don't know. More than likely, yes, but we haven't heard anything. And then Sci-Fi finally announces that they're canceled. And it's thinking, like, that was, they, that show was so good. Mm -hmm. It was such a good mm -hmm. show. And, yeah, the budget was low, but it's like Doctor Who back in the day. Like, yeah, it's a low yeah. budget, but the stories are so deep. But the stories are good, so who cares? So who cares? You know, it's, and I, I loved um, Sanctuary. I'm, I kind of like being human. Uh, mm. But it's, it's, I, I like the British version better because it's a lot darker, a lot more uh -huh. adult. Because um, with a show like that, it can't be all bubblegum, you know. But I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get back into sci-fi, but sci-fi channel. You watched X Files, right? I did, but that was another one of those star. I'm gonna say Star Trek, like or Star Trek. I would say Star okay, Trek. Okay, you need star to start Trek. from season one and just watch. I did because... watch one episode. It was about the. Uh, I guess they're all about aliens. Wait, like, wait, uh, one episode? No, this was like a couple months ago. I went because you know they're uh -oh. all. They're all... <laughs> I've only watched one episode. No, because as a child, it used to scare me. The intro scared me. The, oh, doo, my gosh. Doo, 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 Star doo, I mean, doo, X-Files was awesome. Doo, doo, doo. I mean, yeah, at yeah. least I wasn't super, super happy. Like, I'm not going to lie. You know, there was contract stuff going on. Um, season 9, half of season 8. Um, so I didn't really watch too much of season 9. Season 10, there was closure with the main characters. But I was happy that there was at least closure. You know, and it was cool to have a show that was able to run that long. Right. I mean, it was on for what? Nine, nine or 10 years. Yeah. It was on so, for really I mean, time. and, and then we have, um, two movies. I don't really acknowledge the second movie, but the first one was really good. I heard that the, uh, the, the second movie was just awful. I just wanted to cry. <sighs> you had me there. I think, uh, David, the company came out and said in the, I think the past like six or seven months that he would do, they want to do another one. Both yeah, of them do. He wants Him to do another Dylan one. Anderson wants to do another one. I'd be down, but don't give me that crap for the second movie. That made me sad because the first one was like that. We can't. We don't have time. Uh, <laughs> okay. We don't. We don't have time. Well, what's what's <laughs> no. what's next? What's what's what else we got going on? Do we have anything? Are we? Are we? I think we're good. We're good. I think okay. We're good. Next week we can discuss kind of current games that we're playing because we both each found out that we each have the Vita and have never talked never about talked. It. We talk about everything it else, is. but we have not talked about how we have a Vita. I love my PS Vita, but yes, and we're gonna discuss. Yeah. Um, our blurt of the week next week. Um, and also, which will remain a surprise. And we're going to talk about some classic sci-fi movies. How did it affect you? What did you like about it? And by classic, I don't mean, I mean old or sci-fi. Old, black and white. And, well, maybe I didn't, and, well, there's, because my, I already know what my pick is and it's in color, but it's old and I love it. And I keep not. walking mine around, is, I keep spewing the line at people and I just, I can't help it. Mine is in black and white, and it was a remake. I mean, I'm sorry, it was a re they remade it uh, like seven years ago or eight years ago. And I love the remake. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. Um, but I watched the original like a, like a year later, and yes. it was in black and white. I'm like, this movie's awesome, you know? Because, again, it's about the story. It's not, it doesn't have to be about the CGI. It doesn't have to be about the special effects. Uh, the movie, I thought the movie was great. So we will definitely touch base on that. Um, anything else? Anything? Oh, 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 please, please, please. Listen, rate, subscribe. We yes. really, really appreciate it. Uh, all feedback is good feedback. Um, mm -hmm. But please go follow us on uh, Twitter at Blurred Nerd. Mm -hmm. on t at Twitter.com. Uh, Give me a couple of days. Check yeah. out our Tumblr. Yes, please. Keep <laughs> it up we'll to get date. something up there. Right. Uh, yes. I'm working on getting us a web page, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, I can't give you the address now because it looks like crap. <laughs> We'll have our Facebook fan page also up. Right. So, you is, know, we both have full time jobs. Right. And so this is, this is side we're doing, passion. We're going as fast as we can, but it's a lot. Right. And then also, as you, I don't know if we've touched base on this, but of course we'll talk about it as we get closer to that date. But <laughs> um, Comic Con is around the corner. Comic it's less than, is it less than, it's the 25th, it's so less than 40 days? Oh my gosh. It's so cool. I'm yeah, not good so at math. But. Uh, we'll definitely be talking about that more and more. We'll have episodes pre Comic Con. We'll have episodes during Comic Con. Uh, episodes post Comic Con post -Comic -Con. with some of our friends. You might hear some new voices. Right. And I, I, I'm, I, we're trying to work on some special guests. So, yes. uh, plural. So, <laughs> nothing is set in stone because we're still grassroots. Um, uh, but I, 
I have, we have been really blessed to get really great feedback and to get some shout outs and some potential meet and greets. So meet and greets. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so stay tuned. Um, but again, thank you for listening. Thank you for spreading the nerd, spreading the word. Uh, asking Spread people blurred. to listen. Uh, like I said, any feedback, please tweet us uh, at, at blurrednerd at twitter.com again. And yes. we will definitely be back for.